When attempting quadratic equation word problems, it's nice to have some sort of a game plan. How am I supposed to tell if I'm supposed to be completing the square or if I'm supposed to be factoring or doing the quadratic formula? Well, if the question asks you to find the maximum or minimum, you know that you have to complete the square because a maximum or minimum is a vertex and to put something into vertex form, you have to complete the square. But when it doesn't mention the words maximum or minimum, you know that you're looking for something else, like the x-intercepts. That means that you have to solve for x, meaning that you're going to have to use the factoring or quadratic formula. I've listed out some steps that will help you in both of those procedures. Let's take a look at some of the word problems. There's four different types of common word problems, and I've just listed them. So here's the first one, an area type of question. Is it possible to enclose all four sides of a rectangular photo with an area of 150 centimeters squared using 60 centimeters of framing? If so, give the dimensions of the photo that can be enclosed. So I don't see anything that says max or min anywhere, which means I'll probably be using, using the factoring or quadratic formula method. First step, create an equation. You might actually need two equations, and that depends on the information given. They gave you the area, which means I'll have to use the area formula, and they've mentioned something about framing. That's probably perimeter. So I have a perimeter equation as well. Two widths and two lengths. I know that the perimeter equals to 60, and I'm going to solve for y by bringing this over to the other side and then dividing by 2. So I get the 30, and then I get 1x negative 1x. Going on to my area equation, I know that my length times width is going to be x times y. So here's your x, and instead of writing y, I'm going to write this. That's the whole point of using this other equation. You want everything in x's. You can't really solve if you have an x and a y. So now that everything is in x's, you can substitute what the area was, which is 150, and you're going to bring everything onto one side so that you have it equal to zero. This is standard form. Now I'm going to factor or use a quadratic formula because that's my second step. I decided to use a quadratic formula because it's the surefire way to find your x-intercepts. Um, I couldn't really think about what multiplies to 150 and adds to negative 30, so if you can't really factor right away, quadratic formula is more steps, but it works every time. So we're done that, and I got my first x-intercept as 6.3 and my second as 27.3. If x is 6.3, that means my width is 6.3, which means my length must be 30 minus 6.3, which is 27.3. Or I could have another set of dimensions where x is the 27.3. So 30 minus 27.3 gives you a smaller dimension or a width of 6.3. In either case, your dimensions are 6.3 centimeters by 27.3 centimeters, and that's our conclusion statement. The next type of question is a number type of question. Number two, find two numbers whose difference are 13 and whose squares, when added together, yield a minimum. There you go, they mentioned a minimum. So you know right away you're going to have to complete the square. Create equation number one. So they mentioned a difference of 13. So the two numbers, x and y, differ by 13. And I'm just going to solve for one of the letters. That equation number two is created when they told you what to maximize or minimize. So they've actually told you the squares, when added together, yield a minimum. So the squares of each of the numbers, when added together, this will give you the minimum. This is the equation that we need to substitute the first equation into so that we get all of one letter. Then what we're going to do is expand into standard form, which ends right here, and we complete the square. So this is the entire process of completing the square, and that yields a minimum of 84.5, which is not what they asked. They wanted you to find the numbers. Well, y is negative 6.5, and that gives you this minimum. And then you find your x by subbing 
that red number right back in here. So 13 plus negative 6.5, which gives you your x. So your two numbers are negative 6.5 and 5. And that's your conclusion statement. So we did the substituting, we did the completing the square, and we did the conclusion statement. Consecutive number questions. Now a consecutive number means, um, let's say I'm talking about number 57, the next consecutive number will be 58. So if my number was x, my next number must be 1 more than x. So these are two consecutive numbers. And they're saying the sum of the squares, so here's the sum of the squares of two consecutive integers is 36, or sorry, 365. Find the integers. No mention of a maximum or minimum. We're factoring or using the quadratic formula. Since we have our formula already, we're just going to continue on to number two, which is factoring or using the quadratic formula. In order to do that, everything has to be in standard form, so we open up the brackets using FOIL, put everything together, so here's our equation, and you know what, I noticed that I could actually break down everything by 2 just to make the numbers a little bit smaller, so I divided both sides by 2. Here's my nice um, standard form equation, and I actually decided to factor because I knew right away that 14 times negative 13 gave me negative 182, and they added to 1. You could, you could have totally used the quadratic formula and they would have given you the negative 14 and the positive 13 as well. So if x, your first number, is negative 14, your second number is going to be negative 14 plus 1, which is negative 13. Those are your two integers. Or if your first number was 13, your second number must have been 13 plus 1, which is 14. So you can either have the red set of numbers or the blue set of numbers as your answers. You have to mention both sets. Okay, so then conclusion statement is right here. The last question that's kind of popular is the Pythagorean theorem question. So number four, one leg of a right triangle is one centimeter longer than the other leg. The length of the hypotenuse is 9 centimeters greater than that of the shorter leg. Find the lengths of the three sides. No mention of max or min. We're factoring or using the quadratic formula. What I decided to do was I decided just to draw a picture. So we have, um, let's see, one leg of a right triangle is 1 centimeter longer than the other leg. So here's the other leg, I just represented it as x, and here's the one centimeter longer side. Then the, we have the hypotenuse, which is nine centimeters greater than that shorter leg, so then we get x plus nine. Thinking back now, I'm just going to have to create an equation, and I know that for a right angle triangle, Pythagorean theorem is an equation that I could always use. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and that's what's right here. If I open up all the brackets using FOIL and put everything onto one side and then simplify, I get my standard equation. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor, because I can easily think of two numbers that multiply to negative 80, which is positive 4 and negative 20, and I can get them to add to negative 16 as well. So from there, x equals 2, negative 4, or positive 20. But here's the problem. This one doesn't actually make sense. Negative 4, you, you can't have a length of negative 4. So let's get rid of that, and we know for sure we only have one case. x is 20. This one's going to be 20 plus 1, which gives us 21. And this side's going to be 20 plus 9, which is your 29. So we've factored, and then we're going to do the conclusion statement the lengths are 20 centimeters, 21, and 29.